Okay, so this completely portable setup is running a Raspberry Pi running Windows 11 through an HDMI capture device into my iPad. So this will only work with USB-C iPads, but as you can see, it's coming through. I can maximize it and I can log in with my password and I'm now running Windows 11 through my iPad's display. So you can see that that's working and if I launch File Explorer, all of that's coming up and I can move this around and use all the window snapping and everything that's in Windows and you can see the keyboard is working fine. If I shut this down, I'll show you how it's wired in. So basically, I've got a USB-C adapter with the HDMI plugged in. I've got a very short HDMI cable going into this Pi and I've got power coming from this power bank so the Pi is, is powered independently, no mains power here. You can see when there's no display, it gives you this cool test card. Now these devices are super cheap on Amazon. This isn't exactly the same one, but so many of them are very similar. I bought mine four years ago and I did a load of videos using my MacBook, a Chromebook, and a Windows laptop as a display for another device. But thanks to Panos for letting me know that this can now be used with iPads because I was unaware of the change and it's down to software and I believe an update from Apple to allow this to happen. So Camo Studio is the software to use. So if I use an Android device this time, let's use this cable, which is basically USB-C to USB-A. But any way you want to do it, as long as it supports data, it's fine. And I've got the shortest HDMI cable in the world, possibly. So plug that in, plug this HDMI to USB-C adapter. So this is basically a, a Honor View 20 phone, and this supports a desktop mode. So if I agree to wired projection, that will mean that it's outputting a display. So then I just launch the Camo Studio app and you can see that it's on there. And this is a trackpad. And if I tap on something that requires text input, it will automatically bring up a keyboard on the phone. But you can also use a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard with this if you want as well. So if I maximize that, so now I've got a desktop style Android interface. So if I want to launch an app, I can. If I want to launch, say, the browser, and let's go for, so I've tapped on the text box now so I can type in BBC Sport, launch the BBC site. And any sound comes through the iPad in everything I've tested. So if I call up YouTube, so the sound is now coming through the iPad, which is a lot better than the phone. They're actually really quite decent sound on these iPad Pros. So what else will work through this HDMI? So here you can see I've got my PS3 plugged via an HDMI cable through the capture device. So let's go straight into a game. And of course this will work with PS5 and Xbox as well. And here I've got it running with this Chewy laptop which is running Linux at the moment and you can see it's working as a secondary display. Actually nicer quality on my iPad which is to be expected. And I can still slide up from the base and switch between all the open apps and everything that are on there. So I can go back to that Amazon listing. And when I want to go back to the desktop mode, I can just tap it and it comes full screen. This laptop has also got Windows on it. So if I shut this down. And when I reboot, if I tap F7, I can choose to boot into Windows. And the second screen's already been detected. Just log in. And then we have dual screen windows. I'm not sure how it's configured at the moment. So if I do right click and display. So at the moment it's mirrored, but I can click on here and then do extend displays. So we'll keep those changes, but then we'll work out which one is which. So yeah, this is number two. So I need to swap these two around and apply. So now, if I was to call up files, I should be able to drag that to the left, yeah, and onto my secondary display. And I do like this Raspberry Pi 5 setup. I just need to plug some power into it. So using this power bank again. So it's starting to boot up. You can see I've got it in the sort of studio mode at the moment. We've got under type, external video source, and device, we've got capture card. 
That's all you need to enable to set it up. There's all sorts of other things here. I haven't really played around with all these yet, but uh, it has all sorts of extra modes and things like that. It's a really nice piece of software. So if we go full screen though, because we want to use this with Linux, I can log in. And you can see that's now running Linux and it really looks pretty decent, but also the ability to be able to zoom in to something if you really want to, because it is quite a small display, is pretty cool as well. And double tap usually gets it to full screen. You can see here with the interface or without the interface. But basically pretty much anything that uses an HDMI cable will work through this iPad, through this pretty inexpensive capture device the iPad is powering the capture device, so you don't need any extra power to that. You just need to be able to power the device you're plugging in. I'm not sure if I've got any games on here. So I've just installed the Dolphin emulator from the Discover Store. So let's see if we get much lag. So I play this game a lot, so I'm very used to playing it. We do get a sort of, uh, a bit of a sort of transparent line coming across the screen every now and then. Whoop but uh, it definitely feels responsive. I don't feel that I'm not in control of it. Yeah, really happy with that. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.